Well, parents who have had both boys and girls will confirm what science has suggested, that girls typically mature faster than boys. I would confirm that. But uh, should that impact when boys start entering school? Some education experts increasingly argue yes. They advocate for boys to start kindergarten a full year later than girls. It's known as redshirting, a nod to college athletes who sit out from playing for a year before getting back into the game. With us now, Richard V. Reeves, author of Boys and Men, Why the Modern Male is Struggling and Why it Matters and What to Do About It. Richard, welcome. Uh, uh, you've heard from private school parents who have gone this route and you support it yourself. Uh, why? It's for, for the reasons that you said right at the top there, Tyler, which is it's, uh, it's what social scientists might think of as a well duh moment. T tell me something I don't know which is this maturity gap. But as we've learned more, particularly from brain science, and as girls and women have been able to really, really power through the education system, we've seen the gap emerging. So the maturity gap that we've all known about for a long time is now leading to a really significant gap in education. We see a very big gap in college going, a huge gap in high school GPA and so on. And so it just makes sense, I think, to recognize that there is this difference on average between girls and boys recognize that in our education policy. And in a sense, what it does is it levels the playing field because a 15-year-old girl is more mature than a 15-year-old boy. And so age is quite a crude proxy. Yeah. So in a, in a sense, it just levels things out. Yeah, tell me about it. I have a 16-year-old boy and the girls mm. are way ahead academically. They are mm. kicking boys, you know what. There's a cost, yeah. though, associated in waiting for a year. If your child isn't in kindergarten, you're probably going to have to pay for childcare, which isn't cheap. So is it feasible financially for the average family to do what you argue for? Well, I think that's one of the reasons why, as you just said, Tyler, that we see more affluent parents doing it. Some of the, some of the private school parents I talk to uh, for the research for my book, uh, it's common practice. One, one high school, a very well-known high school that I can't name in, on the East Coast, 20% of the boys in its uh, graduating senior class are old. For the years, so it's an open secret in private schools. But you're right, for the average family, getting your kids away to school is a huge moment, not least because it saves on childcare. So any policy like you know, giving right. the boys an extra year would have to be combined with more investment in childcare, more investment in pre-K. But frankly, we need that anyway. Quickly, do schools have a role in making this decision? What do schools say or what do laws say about this? Real quick. It varies hugely. So actually in New York City right now, in the public school, you're not allowed to delay entry for your child. So some parents will choose to go private for that reason. It varies by state. It varies by school district. It varies by school. And so it really depends where you live and who your kids are. My argument is simply that all parents should have the opportunity to delay entry for their kids and especially for their sons because oh. the science is now pretty clear that that will help them to keep up in the classroom. I'm going to get your book. Thanks very much for joining us tonight.